Romania has just taken a small delivery that signals a very big shift. On January 17, 2026, the Romanian land forces officially confirmed that the first Otokar Cobra II 4X4 armored vehicles have entered their inventory, with unit distribution coming next. On paper, that sounds routine, another first batch received announcement. But in reality, this is the opening move in a five-year program that will put 1,059 protected mobility vehicles into Romanian service. And when you're sitting on NATO's Black Sea front line, protected mobility isn't a procurement buzzword. It's the difference between being able to maneuver under threat or being pinned in place by it. So the real question isn't whether Cobra 2 is a good vehicle. The question is, why does Romania need more than a thousand of them and why now? Because modern land warfare has a brutal pattern. It doesn't reward the force with the most tanks on a parade route. It rewards the force that can move dispersed units quickly, protect them against mines and ambushes, and keep command and logistics functioning when drones and precision fires make every road a potential kill zone. If you want a simple summary of the post-2022 battlefield lesson set, it's this. If you can't move safely, you can't fight effectively. Romania is acting like it understands that. Cobra 2 arrives as the in-between platform Romania has been missing at scale. Not a heavy-tracked vehicle, not a large 8x8, but a compact fast 4x4 designed for the messy dangerous work of getting infantry, scouts, medics, and commanders from point A to point B while the enemy is actively trying to stop them. This is the unglamorous layer of a modern army, the connective tissue, and it's exactly the layer that tends to snap first under pressure. Look at the structure of Romania's modernization path. The country already fields and continues to build up heavier protected platforms, like the Piranha 5.8 X8. Those vehicles are excellent for mechanized infantry and high-end combined arms formations, but they're not a universal answer. They're bigger, more expensive, and not always the right tool for tasks like convoy escort, forward observation, liaison, patrol, border security, rapid reinforcement, or casualty evacuation under fire. That's where a fleet of MRAP Type 4x4S changes the equation. It gives commanders options, and in war, options are survivability. Now, the Cobra II itself is not some untested concept rushed out for headlines. It's an established design, unveiled in 2013, produced for years, and used by multiple countries, over 13, according to the reporting. That matters because Romania isn't just buying a vehicle, it's buying a baseline of proven performance and a mature support ecosystem. In procurement, maturity translates into fewer nasty surprises, fewer design flaws discovered after fielding, fewer delays in integrating radios and weapon stations, fewer will fix it in the next block upgrade excuses. For a frontline state, time is a strategic resource. Romania is spending to buy time back. Technically, what does Romania say it's getting? A high-mobility MRAP with a welded steel monocoque hull, protection against 7.62 mm fire, fragments, mines, and IEDs, and speed up to 120 km per h. You can already hear the doctrinal implications. A vehicle that can move fast across varied terrain, from the Carpathians to the plains, while keeping troops under armor isn't just for transport, it's for tempo. It's for getting there first, seeing first, and shaping the engagement before the enemy's drone feed catches up. And then there's modularity, because modern armies don't just want a truck with armor. Romania can configure Cobra 2 to carry up to 11 personnel in APC form and fit remote weapon stations with 7.62mm or 12.7mm machine guns, or even a 25mm cannon, plus smoke launchers and mission equipment. That's not just firepower, it's a way to turn one chassis into multiple capabilities. Troop transport today, command post tomorrow, ambulance the next day, reconnaissance variant for exercises, mortar carrier for another brigade. This is how you build mass without building chaos, standardize the base, diversify the mission kits. But here's where the story gets more strategic. Romania isn't only buying vehicles, it's buying an industrial footprint. Under the contract structure described, the first 278 vehicles are produced in Turkey, and the remaining majority is manufactured domestically through a joint venture between Autocar and Automechanica SA, formed in 2025, with assembly centered in Medias. The stated goal is around 800 vehicles assembled on Romanian soil, eventually reaching a rhythm of roughly 1.5 vehicles per day at full tempo. That number may sound oddly specific, but it reveals intent. This is not symbolic local participation. This is a real attempt to create throughput, workforce competence, and sustainment capacity at home. Why does local production matter so much? Because the next war won't be fought only by the army you have on day one. It will be fought by the army you can repair, regenerate, and expand by day 60, day 100, day 200. 
If replacement parts depend on long, fragile supply chains, your fleet size becomes a theoretical number. If you can build and support vehicles domestically, your fleet size becomes a real operational variable. Romania is trying to convert procurement into resilience. And there's also the alliance angle. Turkey exporting a major land systems package to an EU and NATO member on the Black Sea is not just business, it's geopolitics with serial numbers, it deepens defense industrial interdependence, it normalizes Turkish platforms in NATO-adjacent inventories, it creates shared maintenance practices, shared training concepts, and likely shared upgrade paths. In a world where Europe is rearming and simultaneously realizing its industrial bottlenecks, programs like this show a pragmatic hybrid approach. Buy proven systems now, shift assembly and support home over time, and avoid waiting for a perfect indigenous solution that arrives too late. Let's talk battlefield logic, because this is where Cobra 2 becomes more than a procurement spreadsheet line. A thousand MRAP class 4x4S means Romania can distribute protected mobility widely, down to operational structures that previously might have relied on soft-skinned vehicles for routine movement. And that changes behavior. Units become more willing to maneuver under threat. Reconnaissance can push farther with less risk. Artillery support teams can relocate faster, reducing vulnerability to counter battery fire. Commanders can maintain control while moving, not just while hiding. Even something as basic as logistics, fuel, ammo, spare parts, can flow with fewer catastrophic losses from ambushes and mines. And then add the modern overhead threat, drones. In the current battlefield environment, exposure is a currency you spend whether you want to or not. Every vehicle movement can be detected, tracked, and targeted. A remotely operated weapon station helps because it keeps the crew under armor while observing and engaging but it also signals a broader doctrinal shift. Romania is preparing for a fight where the line between front and rear is blurred. When loitering munitions and indirect fires reach deep, the safest place is often the one you can leave quickly with protection and with coordination. So is this just about Romania? Not really. This is about NATO's eastern flank learning to harden itself into a posture that can absorb shocks. A protected mobility fleet at this scale supports training cycles, exercises and readiness in a way that piecemeal purchases never can. When Cobra II becomes common across Romanian units, it becomes part of muscle memory. How soldiers mount, move, dismount, communicate, recover casualties and react to contact. That kind of standardization is boring and it wins wars. Of course, the final judgment will depend on execution, how fast deliveries ramp, how smoothly the media's production line hits its targets, how well variants are integrated and whether sustainment budgets match the ambition. A thousand vehicles are only transformative if they stay operational. But the direction is clear. Romania is not just adding another vehicle type. It's building a protected mobility backbone designed for the realities of Black Sea security tensions and the hard lessons of contemporary combat. And that's the real takeaway. The first Cobra II vehicles entering the Romanian land forces family may look like a modest ceremony, but strategically it's Romania placing a long bet that mobility, protection, and industrial capacity are not separate priorities. They're one system. When the pressure rises, will armies be judged by how many platforms they purchased or by how many they can keep moving, fighting, and replacing? Romania's Cobra II program is an attempt to answer that question before it gets asked the hard way.